So let's talk about an injury today that most rock climbers have probably heard of, and that is a pulley injury. Now, if you've been climbing for some time, you either know of a professional climber, a friend, or yourself who suffered from one of these injuries. For those who don't know me, my name is Sonam, and I'm a resident doctor specializing in sports and exercise medicine. Let's get down and talk about pulley injuries in more detail. Let's start off by answering this one question. What is a pulley? Okay, so I've drawn on my hand here, and essentially, there's a few things I'm gonna to wanna to show you. First off, the fingers themselves have three bones. You have the proximal phalanx bone, the middle phalanx, and the distal phalanx. So basically, end, middle, beginning, okay? Then you have two main tendons that flex the fingers of your hand. One is called the FDP, flexor digitorum profundus. The other one's called the FDS, which is the flexor digitorum superficialis, FDP and FDS for short. Now, if we follow the FDP, you'll see that that line, that dark black line will go all the way and attach to the top of my finger. The FDS will come, sandwich it, and attach to the middle finger. Then we talk a little bit about our joints. So this joint here, this knuckle, is called the PIP joint. This one here is called the DIP joint. So let's get into the meat and the potatoes of this, this talk. What is a pulley? A pulley is a ligament that acts to anchor these tendons down. So you'll have five pulleys, A1, A2, A3, A4, A5. Most climbers who injure their pulleys know that A2 is the most commonly injured pulley there is. The A2 and the A4 pulley are likely the most injured because they take the most load. So why are pulleys important? Pulleys act as a holding system so that this tendon can stay nice and tethered to the side of my finger when I flex. For example, a really good analogy that I had seen explained was treating pulleys like the eyelets of a fishing rod. So if you look at this fishing rod here, these pulleys hold the line so that it follows the curve of the rod. If you didn't have these eyelets here, this would essentially be a straight line and you would just lose the biomechanical advantage of these pulleys. Now, as we discussed before, the A2 and A4 pulley are the most commonly injured pulleys because they actually take the highest load. As you can see, they're also the most, they're also the largest and they're the two pulleys that only attach directly to bone. These ones will attach the A1, 3, and 5 to the actual joint capsule and they're a lot more flexible, leading to a lot less injuries. Now, if you really mess up multiple pulleys, you can actually have something called a bow stringing phenomenon. So just imagine this. If you were to tear this pulley, this pulley, and this pulley, your tendon may actually pop out and look like a straight line. And you'll actually see this in people and patients who have pretty bad multiple pulley injuries. What causes these pulleys to, to be damaged or to break? It's mainly based on too much load. And that's pretty much it. How do you increase load on a pulley? Number one, body weight. Number two, dynamic. So if you're trying to dynamically climb and pull yourself up, that's a lot more load than just a static hang. And number three is the way we climb. So it's actually the grip. Most climbers know that there's two ways to grip a hold, especially a small one. You can go into the crimp position, which looks like that, my right hand. So you'll see that the, my last joint is extended and my first joint is flexed here or you have a smooth overhang where you can grab like that and I'll show you a picture here as well so you'll have the open hand grip where all of your digits here are just flexed slightly and then you'll have this crimp grip which a lot of climbers will actually have when they're climbing really really small holds so there was some research done and I will link the the actual papers in the description below looking at what causes increased load on the A2 and A4 pulley. So they actually looked at it, and when they compared an open hand grip to a crimp grip, crimping increased the load on the A2 pulley almost 30 plus times. 30 times the load just by crimping. Crimping increased the load on the A4 pulley about four times. So as you can see, it's an astronomical increase in your load when you're crimping. So there's two common ways people pop their pulleys. One, they make a dynamic move off a crimp grip because we know the crimp puts your pulleys in a compromised position. And two, they simply are in a crimp, they slip their feet, and then there's an immediate application of load as you're trying to catch yourself before you hit the ground. You're climbing, you think you popped a pulley, you've either heard a pop, 
It hurts quite a lot in a particular area of the finger. It looks swollen and red. What do you do? Number one, you gotta stop climbing. So pulleys are ligaments, which means they attach bone to bone. They're not muscles, they're not tendons, they're purely ligaments. Why is that important? Ligaments tend to heal a lot slower than muscles and tendons. <laughs> Particularly, they really require scarring over. So you can have a few ligament injuries. You can have a sprain, like an ankle sprain. You can have a partial tear of the ligament, where only half of it goes away. And you can have a complete tear of the ligament. So you think you have a pulley issue, what do you do? I'd suggest you get it looked at by a doctor because the outcomes of how long you need to rest for and whether or not you need surgery depend on the type of pulley injury that you have. Usually a doctor will look at it, assess it, and maybe order imaging such as an ultrasound to really get a look at that pulley area. There was an article by Schofel and Schofel in 2006, and they essentially divided up pulley injuries based on grades. So you'll get grade one, two, three, and four. And I'll link the actual article so that everyone can read this in more detail because it talks about return to play. But essentially grade one is a strain. Grade two is a partial rupture of your A4 pulley up here or a partial rupture of your A2 or A3. Grade three is a full rupture of your A2 or A3. And lastly, grade four is pretty much multiple ruptures. To really summarize it, grade four is really the only one that needs surgery. Unfortunately, the most common pulley injury seen in rock climbers is a grade three pulley injury. So while it may not need surgery, you're actually out of climbing for almost about three months. In terms of how we treat these, so depending on the grade, we can either get you to, number one, you'll have to take a rest from climbing. Two, if it's a very light grade injury, so you're thinking grade one, grade two, you can tape the actual finger while you're rehabilitating it. And hopefully you can get back into climbing in about two months. If it's a grade, really bad grade two or a grade three injury, you're looking at some special rings and casts to really keep that pulley nice and push back into the finger. Because the problem is you really need, if you rip these pulleys, you need the time for the body to create new, fi to create new tissue, like fibrous tissue that will essentially create a new pulley. You can't heal that pulley, but what you can do is create scar tissue that develops a new pulley. So in terms of taping, there's the main method of taping is called the H tape method. And I will actually link in this video, the YouTube video that shows you how to properly H tape a tendon. So this really only works with really early, like grade one, grade two injuries. Uh, so basically your pulley sprains. So you don't wanna use circumferential taping like this because unfortunately it doesn't actually hold the tendons, which are these guys we talked about, to the bone well. And they've looked at this in research articles. So they came up with a new method of taping called the H taping method. So you cut out a piece of tape, you essentially cut two slits horizontally, leave a part in the middle that is intact. You put that part in the middle right here, and then you take the slits that you cut, and then you wrap above the joint and below the joint. So as you can see, I have really good range of motion, but it goes straight through this joint. And what, it, what research has shown is that actually it distributes the load of the tendon a lot better, and it keeps the tendon as close to the bone as possible, allowing for better healing of those pulley ligaments. Pulley injuries are the bane of climbers' existence, and unfortunately we only really see them in rock climbers because it's one of the only areas, uh, sporting areas, where we put such an enormous amount of force on our fingers. When you're a new climber, you're going to want to avoid crimping to this degree until your tendons become stronger. Tendons tend to become stronger with time. So as you increase your training time and load, your tendons will be stronger than when you started. And that's how you're seeing all these guys such as like Alex Megalos, you know, Alex Honnold climb, you know, 15, 15s, no problem. And, and, and can put their entire body on it because they've adapted their tendon to do so. Bottom line, you feel a pop, you feel some pain, go get it checked out. Take a break from climbing and really look at the resources that I have uh, attached to this video. If you have any questions or comments about this, leave them down below. More rock climbing content will be coming up. If you like this video, please click on the like button. If you want to see more videos whereby I break down injuries so that an average fan can better understand them, please subscribe to my channel. For now, that's all.